Hi, I'm Chris Kepler, and welcome to Does This Happen to You? I'm an actor, voice actor, audiobook narrator, and writer. I love telling and sharing stories about the strange experiences my friends and I have while doing mundane things like grocery shopping. That's why this podcast features funny stories from fantastic writers about our daily anomalies, a micro audiobook about life and befuddlement just for you. Our story this week is from B.B. Nicholson, who you'll find on Medium.com. And here is, My husband doesn't like dogs, so why do they like him more than me? Whether it's doggy love or human love, the lesson is to play it cool. My family was never without a pet. At different times, we had ducklings, cats, kittens, a goat, a pony, numerous turtles, and I ordered a couple of seahorses from a catalog when such a thing was possible. Is ordering seahorses from a catalog still a thing? I doubt it. Our menagerie of pets came and went, but through it all, we were never without a dog. Mr. Chips was a little black mixed terrier with a curly tail, his cuteness a camouflage for grumpiness. Lassie, we weren't original with names, met an early demise because of his irresistible urge to chase cars. I had a beagle puppy that died of diphtheria before the days of doggy vaccines, and I mourned for weeks. Penny, a chihuahua, was the family favorite. She had puppies while we were on our annual beach vacation, and at the end of the holiday, we rode home with them in a cardboard box tucked beneath my mother's feet. Everybody in my family loved dogs, but that wasn't true of my husband's family. He told me about the somewhat traumatic experience they suffered when they ventured into pet ownership. In a moment of emotional weakness, maybe because she was pregnant, my mother-in-law decided she wanted a St. Bernard. What a dog to introduce into a family that wasn't dog crazy. The dog grew huge and wreaked havoc because he was stupid, said my husband. He would wander close to the fence that separated him from the two German shepherds next door and they invariably enticed him close enough to grab his ears in their snapping jaws. They held on tightly, one dog at each ear, until somebody was lured outside by the poor St. Bernard's howls. This happened over and over again, according to my husband. The dog must not have been too stupid, though. One day he managed to escape by barging through a fence too flimsy for a St. Bernard. He was picked up by animal control and whisked off to the dog pound, where he proceeded to not only escape, but to free all the other dogs. My husband's family didn't know he was gone until they saw their pet on the evening news in a feature about the Great Escape. My husband and I have been mostly petless throughout the 45 years of our marriage because he is allergic, although for 17 years we had a toy poodle named Precious. But Precious confirmed my husband's bias against pets when she peed on the floor and acquired a stubborn case of fleas. We loved her, though. She developed cataracts, and we paid $1,200 to have them removed. The surgery didn't work, and she went blind anyway. She could no longer chase her beloved tennis ball, but she lived a good long life and was the sweetest dog ever. After Precious, there were no more pets. I'm done, said my husband. He pops an allergy pill whenever we visit someone who has animals. But the thing that kills me, and the reason I'm regaling you with a brief history of our pet experiences, is that dogs gravitate to him like he's their long-lost human soulmate. We walk into somebody's house, and their dog comes bounding to the door, tail wagging. I try to pet it. My husband pays the dog no attention whatsoever. You get the feeling he wants the dog to disappear. Yet the dog always likes him best. Once it spots my husband, I've lost my chance to pet the animal because it is wriggling around his legs and trying to jump in his lap. Down, 
he says, to no avail. The creature is smitten. This also happens when we are walking and meet a dog on a leash. The dog sidles cautiously toward him, tail whipping. It reminds me of how dogs acted around my aunt when I was a child. She did not like animals, but when she came to visit, they gravitated to her. Go away! Get away from me! she would say, which made them more anxious than ever to win her love, or at least her approval. The only answer I can think of is that dogs want everyone to love them. They instinctively know who doesn't, and they must win that person over. Forget the rest of us. They already have us wrapped around their little paws. They can come back to us any time, and we'll have our undying love and devotion. But that person who is a challenge, the one who doesn't care for dogs, that is the person they must convert, the one they must focus on. It kind of reminds me of dating. Come on too strong, let them know you care, and you're toast. But play it a bit cool, be a little indifferent, and you've got them wrapped around your little finger. I guess it's human nature, or if you prefer, canine nature. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the story, let me know and share it with your friends. Follow me at Chris KK Aria on Twitter or Chris K. Kepler on Facebook. Or check out my website, www.chriskepler.com.